Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name is Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, the thesis, but not necessarily from the real estate side. This is from the technical analysis side. What I want to do is I want to show you the alignment that we've got today. It's incredibly important to understand this alignment uh, because we're shifting from a secular uh, bull market in bonds and stocks into what I think is a secular bull market in commodities. I'm going to show you the data of why I think that. Um, I'm going to use it this time, not with necessarily just the real estate market and, and the business cycle and real estate cycle. Um, I'm going to do this with technical analysis to show you guys a bunch of different, uh, we'll call it a bunch of different areas in the market, which is the bond market. I'm going to go through yields, bond prices, the S&P 500, these consolidation periods, these big expansion periods, um, and how commodities and the S&P 500 are offset from each other. Um, we're ha we're going to have a bull market and a bear market at the same time. Think of it as stagflation, something on the lines of that. And what drives that is the, the demographics. These large demographics coming into home buying years, uh, increasing the demand for homes, uh, and having an underbuilt scenario in the home market. Uh, the spending habits that those people have during a certain portion of their uh, life, you know, the age of their life, they generally spend more when, after they have kids, uh, and the millennials are going to start to have kids and have started having kids, and they're going to increase their spending habits. Uh, there's also a large portion of the millennials that are going to have to still buy homes. I'll show you the demographic, too. I've got a nice little chart showing you the larger demographic of uh, Gen X and Gen Z, or Gen Y and Gen Z versus the baby boomers. I'm also going to go over a bunch of different charts to show you where we're at with commodities, uh, how we're coming and starting to break out of a lot of patterns or about to break out of patterns uh, after their consolidation. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over kind of the boom bust cycle here. Um, this is the cycle right behind me. This is valuation. This is the time frame on the bottom burn this image into your head now when we go through these big secular shifts in the market the assets certain assets are going to be at different stages the bond and stock market are over here we're up at the top in my opinion and we're probably going to head lower uh, or sideways at best over the next decade and commodities are at the bottom over here uh, in the bear trap. So a lot of commodities are putting in bottoms. Um, it depends if you're using a ratio analysis or if you're using um, these commodities based off of the US dollar price. They're all over in the stealth phase and awareness phase over here. The stock market and bond market are over here at the same exact time frame. So they don't move together. They move at different times. What feeds the commodity bull market is the money rotating over from the stock market and bond market. And I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like in all these different charts. I'll show you that rotation. I'm going to show you the valuation differences and the valuation of uh, uh, the rotation of valuation. Remember this image though. Uh, when we get a double bottom, it's actually putting in one bottom here, and then it puts another bottom in the stealth phase. You get a takeoff, and you get your first bear trap move after that double bottom. That is important to understand because that's how the herd trades in these markets. The herd is going to be in disbelief that this is going to come of the commodity bull market. The herd is going to get sucked in to this bull trap where we go to return to normal. They think, based off the past 40 years of declining interest rates, that that regime is going to continue, but it's not, in my opinion. This doesn't have to end here. It could be a double top. We could even go slightly higher than this top. It depends when the money runs out of steam or when that psychology runs out of steam. The reason I think that this is going to be uh, at an end at some point and start to go lower is due to interest rates. Interest rates and inflation in the system. And that'll be driven by the demographic. So burn this image into your head. 
understand this chart, and I'm going to refer back to this chart every once in a while and show you guys how things are moving. So when we, when we go here, <clears throat> let me go here. I got to open this back up. There we go. So we go here. This is the total U.S. population by age and generation. This is what's driving what I am describing. The baby boomers are a smaller demographic than the millennials, 68.7 million, 82.22 million. What's important is wh where, how this demographic moves. We had a slowdown here, and that was the 40-year slowdown. It's based over here, and then the slowdown that we had was a larger baby boomer demographic. That demographic behind it was slower, and now we're coming back up again. That's going to put inflationary pressures into the system. If you were to add 35, 36 years to this level here, which is the age of the first time home buyers, you'll get a, a area in 2028, 2029 as a peak for uh, that housing market. And it also depends how fast we build the homes uh, and it depends what the supply looks like. But that's kind of my best guess of when. We could peak from the credit side is 2028, 2029. When we look at the housing starts, um, the commodity bull markets are in the circles here. And those commodity bull markets all occurred within a credit expansion phase uh, during the uh, credit expansion phase of the demographic coming through. And in, in my opinion, the large the very large commodity bull markets is where you have an alignment where you underinvested in commodities. Commodities are cheap to stocks. Uh, we've got a demographic coming through home buying years uh, and expands the credit at the same time you have a supply side problem. It's basically the same alignment that we have today, like we had in the 1970s, with supply problems on the energy side. And I think we have that on a, on a worldwide basis and credit expansion happening in the world. So we have credit expansion, and we also have credit expansion from the end of a credit cycle, <clears throat> all occurring with underinvestment on the supply side of energy. So what, what is going to be pretty big here <clears throat> is this is the 10-year uh, yields. We had a rising interest rate environment from the 40s all the way to the end of 1980s, uh, 82. It peaked in 82, and then we had a 40-year decline in interest rates all the way to the bottom of 2020. This declining interest rate environment uh, is different than a rising interest rate environment. It's going to put different pressures in the, in the market. Um, a declining interest rate environment is a tailwind behind stocks and bonds. An increasing interest rate environment uh, can be a headwind against stocks, especially technology stocks, uh, with that increasing inflation and increasing interest rate environment. If you notice, you can see the end of this uh, interest rate environment. We had a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder top with a neckline here. It's broken that neckline. It broke the uptrend line to the downside. And then we've had a decline in the interest rate. Uh, what we're seeing now is this end of trend type pattern occurring in bond prices. Uh, yields go inverse to bond prices. So we we had a yield go down all the way till 2020. Yields went up all the way to early, you know, early 2020s. It peaked out and now we're going down lower, breaking its uptrend line. <clears throat> so what I think is going to happen is that bond prices could potentially still go lower and that yields could potentially still go higher. Um, that's going to shift money in the markets differently. And we've seen this before in the markets where uh, bond prices had losses at the same time that the stock market had losses. And that is uh, US stocks versus bonds returns. And you can notice here that we have three distinct areas of times in history where we had US stock losses and bond losses at the same time. So we had it in 1931, 1969, and 2022. Guess what those periods were? They were all the beginning of commodity bull markets. Uh, inflation kicked up, interest rates kicked up. We had uh, the same 
setups as these three time periods. So 31, 2022, and 69. This is the commodity to equity ratio. I know this only goes back to early 1970s, but that was the bottom of the bull markets for commodities. This is when we went into bull markets. So 1970, we had one in 99, uh, 98, 99, and we also had one in the bottom here of the early 2020s. We're still at a very low level. And the commodity bull market occurs the same time that we see equities pull back. So equities pull back the same time that commodities go up. So this is a long-term chart of the S&P 500. <clears throat> and if you notice, 31, 69, and 2022, 31, we can see a large consolidation in this, uh, the S&P 500. We can see a large consolidation here. 1969 is right here. So we can see it was peaking off, and then we went sideways for a decade from 70 to 80. And then we also have another one here that went sideways. This is a mini bull market, and, there, and I'll describe why I think that's a mini bull market in commodities from uh, 99 all the way till 2008. And today, I think that we have another bull market that's occurring in the early 2020s. Uh, I put it in 2020 because that was where the bottom of the bull market occurred. Um, but I think that it's going to take a little bit of time for the stock market to kind of roll over. So what we're looking at, uh, if we were to zoom in on the right hand side here, um, we can see that the stock market's rolling over. And remember, I told you to burn that image into your head. Um, the image at the beginning of this uh, guy here, this image, we're rolling over and we're putting in a bull trap and we're going to see here a return to normal. Um, that's what the people's psychology is going to tell everyone. We're returning to normal. Um, normal is not going to return because we've broken this downtrend line in the interest rate yields. We've broken that and that normal is not going to occur. We're not going to go lower in interest rates to push stocks and bonds higher. And we also have this alignment that uh, we're starting uh, kicking off a commodity bull market. So, and, and again, commodity prices are cheap to stocks. So I think we're rolling over. We could come up higher a little bit more, uh, but this is the return to normal uh, area. Now, I'm not saying that we're just going to crash to some ridiculously low level. That is very possible. Um, but we could also move sideways for a long period of time. But I do think we're putting in a double top, perhaps and that we could eventually work our way lower. Now, when we start looking at valuation differences and ratios, this tells us what's cheap and what's expensive. So here's the gold to S&P 500 ratio. Remember these three timeframes, 31, 69, and 2022. Um, what I'm doing is I'm tying the market conditions at the beginning of a commodity bull market. 31, 69, and 2022, 31, 69, 20, Wow, that's really weird how that aligns, isn't it? So what we saw is that we see an inflation period come in. We see interest rates go up. We see stocks and bonds sell off. We've got yields breaking a 40-year downtrend line. And what you, we usually see is a revaluation of gold in relationship to the S&P 500 in a gigantic bull market. The 2000 to 2008 was a mini bull market. It wasn't the big boy bull market. Why? Well, that occurred under a declining interest rate environment. Um, this is 2000, was here all the way up to 2008, 2006 here, 2007 here. It's, we were still in this decline of interest rates. So, you know, I know Scott and I, when we talked about the mini bull market, it was because the tailwinds were still behind bonds and stocks. You didn't get the gigantic rotation of money. Here, money was rotating massively into gold and commodities. I think with this break of the 40-year decline in interest rates, hence the new shift to increasing interest rate environment and the shift of the end of trend type move in bond prices lower, that is going to rotate a lot more money into commodities because we've got the same market conditions that are aligning as these three. So we are at a bottom here in this ratio, and we can we could turn up and go into a gigantic bull market where gold vastly outperforms the S&P 500. We can also see that we have a topping pattern 
we come down to the neckline here and we created a double bottom. So this is also putting in a double bottom for this ratio. Um, we are lucky to know that we are at this low, 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 this low location of ratio of how undervalued gold is. This is guys, this is, this is where you make money. This is where you have this alignment and this is the knowledge behind becoming a better investor. This is what you need to know. We're also seeing this alignment across the board. Gold versus the M2 money supply. What does this mean? It means that they have created a lot of M2 money and gold hasn't accounted for it yet. What we are waiting for is the market conditions to be ripe for money to rotate away from bonds and stocks and into gold to create the M2 money supply valuation for gold to realize the M2 money supply, to basically account for the money supply. It only accounts for it during certain market conditions. And this is where we're seeing a bottom of gold versus the M2 money supply. And when I'm talking about market conditions, I am talking about everything that I'm talking about, low commodity price to stocks, this type of market condition where you see this sell-off and rotation of money between bonds and stocks where we get both negative returns and basically kicking this commodity bull market off. It's also the break of the 40-year downtrend line and interest rates. We have the alignment here. That is what I'm talking about. Um, we also can see that whatever commodity I pull up, I could pull up gold, I could pull up silver, I could pull up platinum, I could pull up copper. We are putting in bottoming patterns. And as we saw, this is a consolidation, one hump, two hump, three hump. We can break out of this first trend line here in the dotted line, and we're starting to break the big trend lines. Breakout and back test with a false breakout here. This here down here is your uh, cost curve that we went below. So it's bouncing off the cost curve. This is creating a pattern and we could go up. Definitely agree. This is not my chart. This is Grady's chart. And I'm using other people's charts to show you guys that I'm not the only one who thinks, you know, I'm not the only one creating these charts. There's other people doing this. This is in alignment. This consolidation period, see these consolidation periods that occur during the commodity bull markets, we are starting to roll over in this S&P 500. It, these consolidation periods, you can see the one, two, three humps that I put on there, basically. This has the same thing, one, two, three humps. So we've got commodities consolidating when the S&P 500 goes up. And then the S&P 500 consolidates when commodities go up. That, therefore, by, by looking at this, means that money is rotating differently in the markets and choosing commodities over stocks. That is how we get this ratio to come back up. Money is rotating between assets. And what causes that rotation is interest rates. That also caused this here, this anomaly in history. So it's all interconnected, guys. It's all interconnected. Uh, here is the 10-year and two-year inversion of the yield curve. So what happens if you keep if you remind yourself, um, we we draw down here in a kind of more of an inflationary, slightly higher interest rate environment. We come all the way to a bottom here, uh, and then things get flushed out of the system. So we got a flush out of system, flush out of the system. Um, looks like we had a small flush out of system here, and then again we have inverted. What I'm going to say here is we have those interest rates breaking that 40-year downtrend level. It is possible that we get a pullback and a recession in this bull market of commodities before we take off. It is possible. And what's going to happen is that this could go up for a period of time. Uh, we get a slowdown in the markets and a flush out of companies and whatever else is in the system. With an increasing interest rate environment, those companies cannot be sustained with higher interest rates. So we have to flush the system out before we really get moving. Uh, so that is a possibility. I'm not stating that that's my prediction. I'm just telling you it's a possibility that we get a flush out in the beginning of this. Um, it's also possible that we stay inverted or invert more, um, where the, the, the buying pressure of the demographic is so large and the underbuilt condition that we have is so great 
that it is also possible that we continue to invert for a very long period of time. Um, I don't know what exactly the, the path will look like in the short term. Um, I'm not claiming to make these predictions. I'm not claiming any of that. What I'm telling you is the alignment for commodities to outperform equities is here. We are seeing that alignment with the increasing interest rate environment. And we are seeing all of these commodities start to break their patterns to the upside uh, of their consolidation patterns. We are starting to also see that the NASDAQ and the S&P is starting to roll over and that we are likely to move higher in those assets for a short period of time uh, to put in a double top. That is my guess. Not a prediction, but a guess. I also grabbed some charts from North Star Bad Charts. They've got some really good long-term charts going back to the 60s and 70s. Here's more of an alignment to get you guys even further confidence in these markets. This is the 10-year the yield divided by the S&P 500. This is a 40-year downtrend channel. So this is, again, the relative performance of yields, or I should say bond. Uh, yeah, this is yields divided by the S&P 500. Look what happened here on the right-hand side. We've broken that to the upside. We can also see in the 2000s that we just went sideways here. But if we didn't break the downtrend 40-year channel, we, we did not break it. This was a mini bull market in this circle here. This one's a big boy bull market that's coming. If you look back, you can see when the 10-year yield outperformed the S&P 500, silver went bonkers. It went gigantic to the upside here. We are replicating that type of move on the right-hand side. Now, we haven't broken out yet of silver. Silver is the dark black line. This is your ratio. Your ratio is broken out, and silver is ready to, to rip it. So, one, what's important here is we've broken the 40-year downturn channel. That is huge. That's a paradigm shift. Two, we haven't broken out yet with silver. And three, when we did outperform during that time frame, silver went ballistic. So one could conclude, since we've broken the 40-year downtrend channel, and we don't know the exact timing necessarily of when this is going to go back up, but one can conclude that we've, we, we could have a paradigm shift uh, occurring here that hasn't happened in 40 years. And the move could be dramatic to the upside, uh, given the market conditions of money rotating out of bonds, um, which we've seen here, bond money starting to sell out. We've broken the uptrend line here to the downside. And we've got the same market condition alignment here and a bunch of other market uh, alignments that we've gotten with ratios. So that's occurring, and we can see a big move to the upside in silver, platinum, and all these different metals. Um, here's another one. This is also uh, oil. Uh, this is oil in relationship to the 10-year yield. When we saw 10-year yields go up, uh, we also saw oil go up crazily. Crude goes bonkers. We've got that same alignment. Remember, the paradigm shift breakout line that we've broken. It's a breakout above. We've come and broken the 10-year yield uh, to the upside, just like I showed you. What happened with oil? Well, oil's consolidation period, you can see the first hump, the second hump, the third hump. There's your three hump consolidation, and we've broken to the upside, and we're doing a retest move in oil uh, on top of it. That alignment is there. We've broken yields, and uh, crude oil has broken its consolidation period. Um, it's time to go here, guys, at some point. It will break, and it will go higher. And I think crude oil has, from a big picture view, a very good position. Uh, if yields continue higher, I think crude oil is going to continue higher with that relationship. Uh, I think crude oil and the underinvestment in crude oil, we could see way higher prices. This here is evidence of that occurring and the alignment that I, that I look for and see in the markets. We're also seeing a lot of kind of leaders. This is a royalty company in precious metals. Um, we're seeing things start to break to the upside and doing their retest, which means the beginning of the bull market, it's right in front of us. And these, it, the thing that's, that, that's very interesting here is that I am not just seeing this in one company. I'm seeing it across everything. I'm seeing it across different sectors. Um, if I were to put in uh, you know, the beginning of this pattern here, 
where we, we go down to this despair and the takeoff and the first bear trap, we're seeing this in copper. We're seeing this in uh, oil. We're seeing it in silver, gold, platinum. We're seeing it across the entire commodity board outside of palladium because palladium trades different. What's interesting here is that um, we have all this information that is in alignment across the board in commodities. We're also seeing topping patterns in bonds and in stocks. Your alignment is there, guys. Your alignment is there. Now, here's another uh, ratio chart. This is the S&P 500 versus the producer price index. Remember 1931, 1969, and 2022. 1931, 1969 is broken to the downside here. In 2022, we've broken to the downside here. This is the mini bull market um, with credit expansion in the real estate market. The credit expansion caused this, but it wasn't the big boy move. This is a big boy move because we've got an increasing interest rate environment. We've got people rotating money out of bonds and stocks at the same time, like 1931, like 1969. And this is our big bull market move here. And this is also another piece of evidence using the S&P 500 versus the producer price index. So this is signaling that we are putting in a topping pattern, uh, like that first image I showed you, and most likely a bull trap for stocks and we're in a bear trap for commodities and that money is going to rotate from the s p 500 and equity side into the uh, commodity side and this is more evidence of that occurring and the same alignment that we've seen in history so that is what i wanted to go over i wanted to go over that and show you guys this alignment could we see a slowdown in the market? Yes, we could in the short term with that two and 10 year yield basically uninverting. That is possible. I'm not stating that that's a prediction. It's possible. And that's from interest rates going up and flushing crap out of the system, a slowdown. But <clears throat> the alignment here is undeniable, in my opinion. This is using a bunch of different information to consolidate it up and create a potential possibility. And what I'm seeing with where the valuations are in the ratios, uh, what I'm seeing with the market conditions, uh, that's 1931, 69, and 2022, everything's in alignment, guys. It's right here. This is where you make money. In the short term, this is big picture view stuff. This is, this is looking at things like decade level plus. Um, that's the viewpoint I take and the strategies I'm deploying is from that viewpoint that I just went over here today. This here um, is the evidence that a commodity bull market is going to occur. You can refute it, and that's fine. I'd love to see the evidence that refutes it. Um, if you have refuting evidence, put it in the comment section. Love to see it. Um, this is the way that I view the market. This is the data. This is the, the charting. This is the ratios I use. Now, this isn't everything. I did not use everything. We are seeing the Canadian TSX market bottom, which only goes up and bottoms in commodity bull markets. We're seeing it in Brazil. We're seeing it in emerging markets. There is so much data that's in alignment that, to me, it's, it's clear as day because I look at this stuff. And again, guys, if you need help with anything in this commodity bull market, <clears throat> I also do a lot of fractal analysis. Uh, fractal analysis is comparing patterns of, of previous bull market moves to today's moves. Um, those are also in alignment. <laughs> I can't find anything that doesn't align. I can't find a single thing that doesn't align with other commodity bull markets, um, which makes it good because I want to see a full alignment. It doesn't mean that this has to go up immediately. This is going to be a longer term play. Um, I think the commodity bull market will be the largest commodity bull market uh, of anyone's lifetime. Why do I think that? Why do I think we're going to have the most epic commodity bull market in the history of my life? Because I think that we're at the end, or, or we're, at the, we're at a period on the supply side of commodities where I think that we're going to get so tight that we can't easily increase production of it, at least not easily. And that's across a wide ver variety of commodities. I think that's going to drive inflation even higher. And I think that where we're at 
with interest rates and where we're at with the breaking of the 40-year downtrend line of interest rates and where the debt is, I think we're going to have currency problems, which is going to exacerbate the moves of all this stuff. Um, because if they try to save the currency or the bond market, they're going to have to print a lot of money, which is going to be inflationary. And it's going to, it's going to dump more inflationary pressures into the markets. So the alignment here is, I think, so it, it, it's, it's strong, but it's so important to understand this that I think that the stock market could really struggle. And I think commodities could could go up so much that if you're not in them, I think you're going to struggle to some degree because I think the pricing of, the, of, of inflation and commodities and food prices are going to go up at a rate uh, that could be dramatic. And there are certain sectors that I think are aligned very well uh, right now at lows of their equities that just provide ungodly good um, entry points. So um, I've chosen specific companies. I'm also in ETFs. I'm also kind of playing this across the board, uh, physical metals, all that stuff. I'm playing it with everything. But the alignments here, guys, I just gave you the data. Let me know if you disagree or agree. Put it in the comment section. Love to hear your guys' opinion on it. But um, that's what I'm seeing. Um, the next thing that I do is what companies can go up the most during this commodity bull market. And that's where I use the fractal analysis. Um, we can see off of the Fibonacci first kind of wave, we can do Fibonacci extensions. Uh, we can look at fractals, uh, which is previous moves and overlay it. Usually that first move, the first fractals could determine the size of the moves behind it. Uh, so what do you think I'm doing? I'm spending my time looking for individual companies in the most explosive sectors, finding those companies and taking positions in all of the companies that exhibit these explosive moves. Um, that includes uranium. It includes oil and natural gas. It includes fertilizer companies. It includes um, copper and diversified mining companies. And if I were to develop a strategy, my strategy is to have a little bit in all of these gigantic fractal companies and what I consider to be the most important um, sectors or the, the sectors that could go up the most, if I have a little bit in, in all of what I think is the best companies in commodities in each of these sectors, all I need is a few of them to take off. The upside potential is so big. Um, and we can see it through the fractals. Uh, the fractals is the genetics of the stock. It's the the size of the moves that could potentially happen. And I'm not going to capture absolutely every company. Um, there could be companies that are high cost producers that are flat flatlining right now. And when the price goes over that uh, cost curve of their cost curve, they just go ballistic to the upside. But I think the commodity bull market will be so big that you don't have to take on all the risk in the world. I think if you just have a good fractal with a somewhat lower risk setup, you could just absolutely destroy this market. <laughs> Um, so that's what I'm seeing. I'll end it there. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. And guys, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.